We evaluate and treat a lot of patients that come with nasal congestion, sinus disease, allergies, and obstruction in the nose, either when they're sleeping or also throughout the day. There's a number of conditions that could cause that. They all have to do, of course, with allergies or environmental exposures, as well as on the anatomy of the patient. Occasionally, there might be patients that had a nasal fracture in the past, or even patients that had surgery for these types of problems that then develop congestion later on. And then, of course, sinus disease, chronic sinusitis, which, as we know, is a very common disorder that affects many millions of Americans and is treated initially with medication, but when medication fails, minimal invasive or surgical options can also be great alternatives. Common problems that we encounter with patients might include deviated nasal septum, which is a deviation of the wall that divides the nose in two, and that might cause obstruction in one side or the other. Then we have the inferior turbinates, which are very important structures inside the nose. They are responsible for regulating the flow of air through the nose. They add moisture and temperature to the air being breathed through the nose so that when it hits the lungs, it's nice and warm and moist. But when these are too big or inflamed, they of course restrict the flow of air as well. Lastly, you have the external structure of the nose, an area called the nasal valves, which is an area that is prone to collapse because it's only made of cartilage, which is soft and flexible. So when it starts to collapse, it causes a restriction of the flow of air through the nose. And we have many ways to treat this in a minimally invasive way or also in a surgical way, depending on the particular findings. For the deviated septum, there are several options. If it's not a severe deviation, we can treat that in the office with radiofrequency or with a minimally invasive surgical procedure more extensive surgery that also involves the bony component of the septum, not just the cartilage, but also what we call the maxillary crest. For turbinate reduction, we have very advanced technology, and this might include radiofrequency techniques that reduce tissue or displace tissue and open up the nasal passages in that fashion. We also have laser technology that can be used in the same way. And then to treat the nasal valve area, we have minimally invasive approaches that can open it up by reshaping the cartilages involved in the collapse or use sutures or reabsorbable implants that can also displace and bolster that nasal valve area to prevent it from collapsing and make it more resilient to the flow of air. Lastly, for chronic sinusitis, we are able to perform in the office a technique called balloon sinoplasty, which is a minimally invasive sinusurgical procedure that allows us through the nasal passages to access the sinus openings, dilate them open, and allow for those sinuses to basically drain normally and not accumulate mucus and not become infected in a recurrent basis.